Good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? It's Corey Bacon here, and I am a national educator with John Paul Mitchell Systems, and I'd like to welcome to you this Zoom class on classic modern barbering. So for me, I'm just really excited to be able to work side by side with one of my favorite guys, one of my favorite colleagues in the barbering game, New York the Barber, Damon Redding. And what we decided to do is show you some techniques that are going to mirror each other but give uh, you different perspectives on how to achieve the same goal. So uh, when it comes to classic barbering, I think of like tapered haircuts, textured haircuts, haircuts that can be styled in different ways. And me and Damon talked about the best way to approach this so we can give you the most bang for your buck. And what I'm gonna do, I have this lovely doll head and I'm gonna do a scissor cut and show you how we do a uh, textured top modern style crop using scissors and doing a taper. So I've already started and uh, you can see the beginning of my taper that I've done with shears and Damon's gonna do it with clippers with his live model. So we're hoping that we can give you the best perspectives of uh, both types of uh, approaches using different, different several, several types of techniques. And if you guys got any questions or anything like that as we're going through this, please, feel free to dive in to the chat box. Damon. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you everybody for attending this class this morning. I'm super excited to share this information with you. My name is Damon Redding, AKA NY The Barber 718. I'm here today to talk to you about the modern men's classics. I'm going to talk to you about three things today. I'm gonna to talk to you about products. I'm gonna to talk to you about tools and I'm gonna to talk to you about techniques. Like Corey said, we're gonna do two different renditions of this particular haircut. It is actually going to be more of a salon friendly haircut that's going to be created with two different ways to create it. He's going to do it with share cutting. I'm going to do it with clip over comb as well as share cutting as well. Um, what I did actually do was start my model already just to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're trying to achieve today throughout this haircut with the clipper, as well as Corey has started his model also. So what we're going to do today is we're going to style, we're going to create the same haircut but we're gonna style it two different ways to be able to show you that you can create a haircut and also be able to style it two different ways so that it's easier for your clients to be able to get two different styles and looks out of one particular haircut. Of course. Yeah, so as you can see, I have this taper. And when I'm, one thing I'm gonna do is start with um, horizontal sections. I feel as though the horizontal sections is a great way to be able to get into the haircut when at, a, at, a, uh, at a longer length and achieve really what you want. So on this side, I know I got finger length a little bit longer. Um, it goes really tight and then it um, it graduates up to the parietal. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start at the parietal with a longer length, taking horizontal sections, like so about an inch wide. And I'm gonna cut my first guide. I got a little bit of my hairline in there. So I'm gonna just scoop that out of the way. I do have, I have prepped my hair a little bit with uh, grooming spray and we'll go into details about uh, the products like Damon said, but grooming spray is good to be able to spray onto the hair and prep me for my scissor work because it's a light hold without gunking up my shears. So about an inch length or more, and I'm just gonna start horizontally to go straight across to kind of start a guide and remove some of the bulk. Now, as I move down, I'll start to comb up to that guide. Now, as you can see, that's a little longer than the other side and that's okay because I do know I'm gonna go in with my shear and comb. I'm just initially starting with horizontal sections to get me into the groove and taking that hair down quickly. As we go around the head, we know that <clears throat> the head shape rounds. So as I come around the, past the mastoid process, I want to make sure that my finger position and my finger angle is representing the length that I want. I want to be mindful of the curves and channels of the head. And I just want to be consistent with my tension, my finger position, and my sectioning. And what that allows me to do 
is to create an evenness right here that I can then take a shear and comb to. I'm just gonna grab those sideburns and take that right in. And then at this point, I'm gonna start to do my shear and comb. So I'll come around, I'm adjust my light so you guys can see, right? And then shear and comb, I'll start right here with the sideburns. I start to work up into that parietal region and just visually looking for balance with the other sides. So shear and comb is important. <clears throat> it's an important technique to learn. Uh, mainly all the work is, is in the comb, okay? So the comb and how close I am to the head is controlling the length. The pitch of the comb is controlling whether it's a graduation, right? Or a layer, or if we do it this way, it's just a mistake. So either straight up and down 90 degrees or 45 degrees is the desired angle for my shear and comb. And as I work tighter toward that taper, I can get my comb right up against the head and really start to take in. Now, if you get really good at shear and comb, <clears throat> You can get tighter with your shear alone by holding your finger and then holding the shear at that 45 degree angle. So that allows me to go nice and tight. I'll come on this angle so you can see. So my shears is at the 45. So that as I'm coming at this, at the nape, sorry, at the temple, I'm creating that 45 degree angle with the shears. And then we could point cut and define around that temple. And then just bounce back and forth between shear and comb. Point cutting and freehand to give that perfect temple taper experience. Where are you at, Damon? All right. So as Corey just explained to you about the horizontal section, the reason that Corey did the horizontal section is because what it does is it gives you the opportunity to be able to create your silhouette of the haircut. The silhouette will be what you are looking at from the side. Your profile will be what you're looking at from the front. When you're thinking, when you're thinking about men's haircutting, you should always think about facial shape. So what we want to do is we want to be able to create a squareness in the, in the corners following the jawline. So in order to do that, you need to be able to create your shape from your silhouette. So, like Corey, I actually use horizontal sections as well, excuse me, and that's going to be considered to be block graduation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right up underneath the section that we sectioned out already, which is recession to recession, because systematically it gives you the opportunity to be able to control your haircut with longer limbs and be able to control your sides. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a horizontal section utilizing block graduation. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to put it at mid elevation because if I go at high or low elevation, if I go at low elevation, it's going to create too much of a weight line. If I go up too high, it's going to make the line too soft. But I'm going to go mid elevation. What that's going to do is it's going to give me the opportunity to be able to create just enough weight in my parietal area to be able to create my shape during my silhouette. And it'll make it easier for me to be able to connect the sides of the top when I'm utilizing my clippers and clipper over comb. So what we want to do is we want to follow the natural shape of the head, which is going like this. And then we're going to fall back, going towards the occipital bone because the head is not round. It is, it is actually round and it has contour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around and I'm just going to gradually create my shape following the natural shape of the head. And we're going to work our way all the way down. Coming like this. And what this does, this block graduation does, it gives us the opportunity to know what our longest length is in our parietal area. So when we have to connect the top to the sides, we already have our longest length. So I'm gonna work it all the way around and connect to the side that we already previously cut. Okay, 
So you're going to see a heavy weight line already in there. So then when we come with the clipper over comb or come with our clippers itself, it will make it much easier to know where we're going at. So I'm just going back, double checking it and making sure everything is nice and even the way I want it. I'm going to also follow the natural shape of the head. So instead of my hands being all the way like that, I'm going to kind of go in a little bit towards the forehead to make sure that it's following the natural shape. So you can see this hard weight line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my number two guard and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to come in with the scooping motion and I'm going to pop it out right at that line that I just created with my block graduation. And that's going to help us create the silhouette that we want to be able to create. So the top has enough hair to rest onto the side. So we're just popping it out. And as you can see, it went straight in and it was able to pop out to be able to create that squareness. Now, the connectivity comes from clipper over comb. Now, once we get this line created, the reason I choose to use clipper over comb is because it gives us the opportunity to be able to have more than one guard in our hand without turning around, grabbing a bunch of guards, okay? And that's because if I take this comb and place it flush against the scalp, it's going to be one eighth of an inch, which is equivalent to a number one. If I take it and I bevel it out, I can go from a number one at the spine and go all the way up to a number eight or six or whatever I desire because I'm rotating the comb out. So now that we have already created our silhouette, we're going to just connect it to the side. So using clipper over comb, I'm going to come diagonal to reduce bolt and horizontal to fade. So you see this line? We're just going to connect it. And you want to hold your clipper like this. The reason I hold my clipper like this is because what it does is it gives me the opportunity to make sure that I'm not tilting the clipper too far forward and creating rattling on the teeth which will create a lot of uneven areas. And then I have to come in and dust it off with my shears. So by me holding the clipper like this, it allows the weight of the clipper to rest on here. And it keeps the clipper parallel to the length of the comb and the width of the comb. And it also makes a smoother surface. I have my clipper comb, my clipper open instead of closed because by it being open, it's gonna create a softer finish as opposed to keeping it all the way closed and creating a harder line. So we're just gonna keep following it all the way around connecting the block graduation to the sides, thus giving us the opportunity to have squareness in the parietal area that has connectivity to the top, but also keeps a masculine shape for the haircut. Most round shapes are usually designed to give you more of a um, gentleman's cut. So if the sides are weighted, round is the ideal shape for the sides. But this particular haircut is disconnected. So by being disconnected, you want to be able to have squareness into the area. So this is how you create the squareness. You come in with the block graduation, and then it'll give you your longest length. And then you know from there, you can come up with your clipper over comb once you put the desired length in the bottom areas of segment one, and then you'll be able to have connectivity from it. Of course. Yes, thanks, Damon. So all the things that Damon was talking about, I am doing with my shearing comb and as he was talking and you and the clipper and comb i sped it up really quick with my shearing comb now that takes a lot of uh years of practice a lot of people uh feel that uh clip uh, shearing comb is uh laborious um a lot of it is all about the control of your shears um your comfortability but i'm gonna tell you one of the biggest things about shearing comb is the size of the shear. So um, I'm working with at least a six and a half, seven inch shear when doing shearing comb. I am not really doing shearing comb with my, with my four or five inch, four and a half inch shear. Like this is gonna take forever, lots of labor. Plus you end up putting small lines. So the longer the shear, the better. So if you're afraid of longer shears, just know that shearing comb is the best application 
for uh, a longer shear. <clears throat> and the comb, so this comb, this is pretty much a long, I mean, this comb was pretty long. I love this comb, it's one of my favorites. Uh, so seven, eight inch comb is gonna be good or like the comb you saw Damon have, the clipper comb, when you're doing clipper and comb, it is designed to be wider. So it's wider so you can get that, that nice flush uh, effect with the clipper. And when I'm doing that same motion with my shear, I'm looking for a nice flush effect with my shear. Now, <clears throat> sometimes I will go in and have the hair hanging out of the shear. I'll show you like this, let's get a little tighter. Um, and usually that happens if I'm texture, texturizing the hair. So if I'm, with the hair is hanging at the very teeth of the comb, that's when I'm looking for a nice clean line. When I'm texturizing, then it could be softer and hanging out of the comb. So <clears throat> that is only for dealing with challenge areas. But when I'm trying to create that silhouette, like Damien was talking about, and create that wonderful shape, I want to be flush to my, my comb. I want my scissors to be moving consistently in a nice even pattern so I can create this buildup of weight. I have a little bit of disconnection here. So I'm just gonna go right in and clean that up. Another cool tr trick is if you get comfortable with your shears or if shears, if the shears are your um, wheelhouse, sorry about that. If shears are your wheelhouse, you might want to think about some freehand techniques. So freehanding um, is also something that, you know, comes with practice. But one cool way of getting into freehand is using your finger as some support. So you either take the tip to your finger and you go across like this, or you use the tip of your finger to hold your shear steady. And then that way you can kind of build off and create this freehand experience and really create the shape and any little imperfections that pop out. So I've been pretty comfortable. I mean, I started off doing afros in the barbershop. So this was one of the things that I got comfortable with early in my career. So I tend to really create and build off that shape when I'm using my shears by freehanding any imperfections. Also, that's gonna allow me to go nice and tight here being able to freehand. So I'll just use my, the points of my uh, shears and I use my fingertip to hold it in position and I can go nice and tight. Now, why am I, why are we showing you this? Because some people, they just, they're more comfortable with shears. And if you, if that's you, then, you know, you should be able to create these looks, these barbering styles, these techniques with shears. If you go back a hundred years, there were no clippers, right? They were pretty much shears and they did a lot of these looks with razors and shears. So this is why we thought that it would be great to give you both of the perspectives. So I'm pretty much good to go with my sides. I think I'm a little bit longer on this side. So I'm gonna go a little tighter so we can have more balance as I start to work up to the crown. I'm sorry, work up to the parietal and the top of the head. Damon, where you at? Okay. All right, so now the card is showing you that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on creating the taper in the nape of the neck, as well as the temporal lobe. Okay, now I know that a lot of barbers are used to using uh, or doing tapers, but a lot of hairstylists have a difficult time with it. So we decided to do this today, be able to give you the opportunity to be able to see exactly how we do tapers and how easy it is to create a taper versus um, a fade. It's the same thing. All right, so what I did was I created segment ones, which will be my line of demarcation. It will be my lowest section. I did that with the clippers all the way closed. And all the way closed means that the armature is pushed all the way forward as opposed to being pushed all the way back as well as on the side, I came in. And now on the side, I'm gonna go all the way open because I wanna be able to see that line to connect his beard to his side, all right? So there's a couple different ways to fade, all right? So typically, 
Um, some people may think that your next move will be go to a number one and then a one and a half to connect the two. But what I like to do is I like to do it exactly the opposite. And the reason I like to do it exactly the opposite is well, I want to be able to control the weight distribution. So if I go a one uh, from demarcated line to a one to create segment two, it's going to continue to travel up the head. It's going to make the taper raise up higher than what I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do it vice versa. Instead of me doing segment one with a all the way close and then going in with the one and then going in with the one and a half or two, I'm going to do it exactly opposite. I'm going to go one and a half all the way open. Then I'm going to go one and a half close, a one all the way open, one close, and then a half guard. What that's going to do is it's going to give me the opportunity to control my weight distribution and be able to give it more of a gradient effect that's going to allow it to be faded out more and I'm going to be able to control it. So coming in, I'm going to go all the way open and I'm going to utilize a C-stroking motion while doing this to soften it up. All right? Then I'm going to go all the way close. Okay? So now that we've done that, our next move is to go to a number one and then a half guard. And this particular area, you can see that he has his hair growing in this direction. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that at all times you are using your comb or brush to comb in the direction that it's growing to ensure that you are cutting it the way you want to cut it. So we have the number one guard all the way open. All the way close. And on this area, I'm going to use the corner of the blade to follow the natural growth pattern of the haircut. And now that I've done that, I'm going to switch to a half guard. And I'm going to go all the way open. Halfway, and then all the way close. Damon, if I could just jump in real quick. What, what Damon's talking about, he's doing with the clippers. As you can see, I'm doing that same thing with my shears. So <clears throat> it's the same motion that he's talking about, that C motion. He's using his clipper, and I'm using the shearing comb to create that same position. The, the doll head, notice the doll head and this client's head ha is in the same position. It's more about the head position and how we use the, the curvature of the head to create that taper and how we work that shape. So the shear and comb, I'm using the same C motion with my comb. Same, the only difference is that I have manual, manual clippers or scissors. Some people call clippers electric scissors. So how do you get tighter? You can go either point cut like I did at the taper. You can go right flush and keep your shears at that angle as you get tighter. Or if you have the tightest, tightest um, taper comb, you can go nice and tight. But I'm not looking for that super, super tight um, taper. I'm just looking for the soft taper on my doll head as we can see it right over here. Okay, so now the core has said that. I came up underneath it after the half guard with the clipper all the way open, which is the armature push all the way open. And I'm working that. I'm going to go halfway. And then I'm going to go all the way closed again, which is what we started out with initially. So usually when I line the back of someone's neckline, if I line one side, like I did on this side, and then if I come here and then I line like this, I'm going to have a blind side on this side. So typically what I like to do is I like to look at where I left off at, and then I mark the very bottom with my clipper. And then I go to the master and I just connect it. And what that does is it gives me the opportunity to ensure that they have the same shape on both sides of the neckline. 
Now, we have to be mindful of our necklines because if you make a neckline too tapered on a person that has a thin neck, it'll give the neckline the appearance of a toothpick. And if you make a wider neckline on a person that has a wide neck, it'll give the appearance of a tree trunk. So what you want to do is you want to do it vice versa. If a person has a wide neck, you want to taper the neckline in a little bit more when you're edging it up around the perimeter. And then for a person with a center neck, you want to widen it out to be able to give it a little bit of volume in the neckline to make sure that it's not looking as if it's a toothpick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow that the same way. You're going to use the length of your blade for long lines, and then you want to use the corner of your blade for arcs and curves, which will be coming over the ears and on the side. And the same procedure that I followed in the back on the taper, we're going to follow it the same way on the side to be able to blend in the side, except you're going to be able to use a little bit more of your corners versus your entire length of the blade because you want to be able to control the fade. So the same thing that we did before, we're going to start off with the one and a half. I'm just going to come in. I'm using just this portion of my clipper from here that way instead of using the entire length of the blade because if I use the entire length of the blade, it's going to create another hard line and then I'm going to be fighting with that line. So just by using the corner of the blade, what it does is it diffuses the line equivalent to you point cutting and it gives you the opportunity to be able to soften the line so you can be able to control that particular area. A taper is actually nothing more than a fade in a controlled area. So I know that a lot of hairstylists seem to be concerned about that, but if you utilize just the corner of your blade and go in like this, it'll give you the opportunity to want to be able to control it a lot better instead of creating a, a harder line doing that. So we're using the same process. We're from one and a half to a one all the way open, and then we're going to go with the half guard all the way open to all the way closed. When you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you're not going up too far. You want to keep the taper in the desired area, especially if you're going to create an arc at the temporal area. Now, if a person comes in and asks for a higher taper, then you want to do that. So what I did was when I created segment one, I started right at the very top of here and blended from my beard to be able to create segment, which, segment one, which was my line of demarcation. This gives me the opportunity that when I'm fading, I do not exceed past this area when I'm connecting the sides to the top. But if someone comes in, they want a high taper, then you can make a line of demarcation a little bit higher and it gives you the opportunity to push the taper up as high as you want it to be. Damon, we had a question that came in for you. Yes, um, Jennifer is wondering, do you have any recommendations for cordless trimmers for edges? Um, that's kind of a, a preferred thing. Um, there has a, there's so many different variations of clipper companies that have quality tools. Um, sometimes I use Anders, sometimes I use uh, Babblers. Sometimes I use wall. I guess it depends on what I'm trying to use. But I would have to say that probably uh, the wall detailer would probably be your best, uh, most versatile tool because it gives you the opportunity to be able to line through thicker hair as well as hair that's a little bit closer. Sometimes when barbers zero out their clipper, what happens is if the clipper, uh, if the hair is long or stringy, the clipper will want to pull the hair. So this, those kind of clippers gives you the opportunity to be able to line through something that's a lot more thicker versus something that's more closer to the scalp. So the Babbler's trimmer is what I'm using today. And the reason I'm choosing to use this trimmer is because it gives me the opportunity to be able to do the same thing as well. So on this side, what I'm gonna do is, first off, when you're trying to do a line, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you create a previous cut side, you wanna mirror the sides and make sure that they're matching. So a lot of times you'll see barbers step back and they'll start lining, and a lot of people don't know what they're looking at. What we're looking at is the height difference from the corner of the eyebrow to the side of the head. So that's what gives us the balance. So when you do that, when you look at that height, you want to make sure that you're doing the same thing on that. So a lot of times what we do is we'll just pull the skin taunt, we'll mark it like this, and that'll let us know if one side is higher versus the other side. And then we'll create the arc and curve that we're doing. Now, on this particular side, this side is a lot easier for right-handed barbers 
because we usually line going down this way. But on this side, this is the side that a lot of barbers have a tendency to have a difficult time with because it feels unorthodox going back that way. So the reason I chose to leave this side out is because it's going to give you the opportunity to be able to see how to take a weak side and make it become a strong side. So once you mark it like this, what you want to do is you want to trick your brain because what happens is your wrist is designed to turn in, not turn away from you. So when you try to line away from you, it feels a lot of strain on your forearm. So if you go this way, it's going to feel unorthodox. So by us marking it like this, it gives me the opportunity to be able to create my shape coming from the bottom versus coming from the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to go into the curvature of your hand and it's going to feel more normal. So now that we have it, you can mark the bottom as well and then pull the skin tone and just create your curve using just the corner of your blade. And then you use the length of your blade to clean it off a little bit more. And just follow the head shape. Like so connecting the dot. That's it. Corey, how are you? I have already I've started working on the top and I'm doing horizontal sections from the crown. So this is just going to keep me in control of the crown area. And I started at my where my disconnection from the parietal was and just taking half inch to an inch sections, depending on the texture and density of the hair, horizontal straight back. Now I'm pulling to the same point. So that's going to leave it longer at the top by over direction. And I know that because I'm right now just concerning with the sides and how that blends. So I want a continuation of this shape upward. So horizontal sections towards around the back, at the crown and at the parietal, going in about maybe uh, two inches. And then I'm gonna switch to the very top where I'm gonna create another horizontal guide. So over here on the left side of my client, I just drop that down. Make sure that the hair is wet as I'm continuing through. And just like how Damon started his haircut at that parietal area, creating those horizontal lines, I'm just working the opposite way from the bottom to the top. <clears throat> so here's another horizontal section. And I only do that to maybe, like I said, about an inch, half an inch past the parietal. I don't wanna to go too high up with that because that will create a different look altogether. So consistency right on up with my shears. And also keeping in mind that I wanna add texture. One thing too, when I get to the hairline, I know I want the fringe area to be slightly longer. So what I'm gonna do is pitch my fingers back so that as I cut that section, as I cut that section, I get some over direction from the hairline. So we're here. And what I want to do is take this front line section and as I'm cutting that horizontal section, instead of going straight out, I turn my finger slightly away from the hairline like this. So I give a little pull. So as I cut, there's some elongation towards the front. So as I start to work the hairline and create length that it will, um, that I don't have it too short, right? <clears throat> then after doing that on both sides, it's a little wonky, I'm got, kind of got crazy things going there, but this top section is what I'm gonna concentrate on now. So when we look at it like this, it's a little, it's a little crazy, but I know that it's going to fall over and the textures that I want to kind uh, of control, right? We have a little bit of here. Just gonna over direct this again. Just clean this up. Okay, 
But we're balanced on both sides. So as long as we balance on both sides, I'm good. <clears throat> Let's turn them around, back to the very top, drop them down. And at the very top of the hair, I'm gonna go across the crown, right at the apex, comb that hair straight up into the air with the horizontal section like so. And this is where I'm gonna decide what is gonna be the desired length for my textured top. <clears throat> so I can go, I can use this as a, as a guide if I want, or I can go shorter if I want, because this hair is gonna fall back anyway. But typically, like we wanna keep some flexibility in the, in the style. So uh, like me and Damon had been discussing with each other, like the proper length for this to either go forward or be styled back is what I should be thinking, right? So, so for me, that's somewhere, let's break this section down a little bit, make it a little bit more manageable. That's somewhere right around here, right? So I lift that straight up, let's turn it around, straight up in the air. And do my cut. So you could choose to do either a straight cut or a textured line cut with point cuts. I'm gonna go with a straight cut and then I'm going to dry the hair and maybe add some texture or use texturizing shears. So once I cut that first line, then I go to each side. I'm gonna to go to my right first and I'm lift that up. And now I have a guide from my sides right here that was already cut. So let's lift this up and cut. And then we work that down to the side. So there's my side length and then one cut. And there we go. Do it on the opposite side. I hope you guys can see that pretty good. Straight up. Straight up. And then to the side for blending right there. And I'm just gonna continue that with horizontal section straight through the front, <clears throat> over to um, combing back to each previous cut section. So then I'll have a couple of guides in my hand. Right there. And then down to the side again. And there's that disconnection. We just blend that right off. Opposite side, straight up. Disconnection. Where you at, Damon? All right. So now the core is showing you that. I'm going to show you how it is on the live model. So first off, the most important thing is making sure that you understand the growth pattern of the hair. As you can see, as you can see, he has more of a swirl where the hair is going to actually grow this way and grow down. So when I created my initial top section, I dropped this down because I want to make sure that I'm not connecting this to the top and it's not going to live naturally, okay? So I combed it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to do directional cutting, layering to soften this up to this and connect the top. So I'm going to follow the natural pattern that the way that the hair is laying. So I'm going to start right at the very back. And then we're just going to go up and create it just like that. And we're gonna follow it all the way around. And what that's gonna do is gonna soften that corner up just a little bit. Coming around, you see how they have that hard corner? Just softening it up. 
And then if, ha if they have too much of a corner, once we're done, we're just going to soften it up with some silver comb to round the edges just a little bit. All right, so we're doing that in the crown area. And this crown is going to give us the opportunity to connect the top to the sides. So you know that you don't want to make this too short because you don't want it to pop up. But you also know that it's going to have connectivity to the top. So you want to make sure that you leave enough length to be able to make sure that it's not too short in the top when you go to creating your sectioning. Okay. And now that we have it like this, we have softened that up and we're going to go to the top. So Corey did um, horizontal sectioning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use vertical sectioning. Now, I actually put a little bit of quick slip by Paul Mitchell in the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me the opportunity to keep the head moist and uh, lubricated for me to shear cut. And then I put a little bit of water. Okay, it also will give me the opportunity to make my blow drying a lot easier. All right, so now that we have that length in the top, we're going to create a mohawk section through the very center, which is called the profile section, to be able to utilize the length. All right, so now that we have our back cut, we know that this is our shortest part. So I'm going to rock the foot, rock it back, rock it forward just a little bit to kind of cheat. And then we're going to work our way straight across the top. Now, this is actually square set, square cutting because what we're doing is we're following the natural shape of the head, but also compensating for the apex. And we understand that the apex is the highest point of the head. So let me step to the side where you guys can see a little bit better. And we're just going to cut it just like that, following the natural shape of the head. All right, so now that we have our length, every time we cut our next section, we're going to do that, and we're going to just pull it down. And then we're going to split the first section, move it to the side, and create a traveling guide. And as we go up, we're just going to go section A. We're going to pull section B into section A. Once we cut section B, we're going to pull C into B, D into, into C. And we're just going to follow it up. And what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that we're not taking too much length out of the area that's going to fall down into the parietal because we understand that that particular area has contours and shapes to it. Once we create it like that, then we're going to come back and then we're going to cross-check it horizontally and texturize it. Or how are you doing? I'm pretty much done with the, the top. I just want to adjust the fringe area. So I'm looking at how my sides are falling at the crown, checking the silhouette, doing a little bit of uh, housekeeping, going through with my shear and comb. Uh, one of our fellow ed educators uh, posted a great video, Lucas Downey. He said, you inspect it, not correct it. So I'm expect inspecting looking for the edges, making sure that everything's falling right, anything that's out of place. I don't know if it's on my screen or on the door. Okay, it's on the screen. Anything that's out of place, I'm just going to go in and adjust a little bit, cross check. And for the most part, so this is what I want to control, uh, create with the fringe, right? So the fringe is very extended and long, right? So this is giving me that, um, that feeling that, that we were looking for was, oh, if he wants to style it up, right? Or if he wants to style it to the side. But since I do know I want a crop top, it is uh, a little bit too long. So, uh, but I'm fine with that because I'm just gonna go right in and clean and give a nice uh, effect to the um, fringe area. So we're gonna do that. I'm going to use my shear, um, shear and comb technique by pretty much lifting up the fringe area with the wide part of my comb, placing it in, 
and then give it a nice little angle. I think I want to give them a Euro angle fringe because that's kind of cool. The kids like wearing that. So I'm gonna leave a little bit out to a point like so. And then on the opposite side, come in the other angle like so. Creating that pointed effect going in. And lifting this up and just point that in. Also, I know I'm coming in with my texturizing shears next. Making sure we have balance, looking for the balance. <clears throat> A little disconnection here at the temple. So I'm gonna go in and shear and comb that just so it makes sense. And it's a lot cleaner. Little freehand. Circle. Little freehand. The circle. The circle on the magnet. Fucking punchy. All right, I feel good about that. Now I'm going to pick up my texturizing shears. I, I typically like the wider tooth shear for this type of work because I want to add some movement and texture throughout the hair, right? I want it to kind of stand free form. I know I got my shape in. Um, also to do a ex little extra blending in some areas, it's good for that. So challenge areas like the crown. Sometimes people go too hard with the texturizing shears or they're using texturizing shears that are very, very, uh, have a lot of teeth. So it makes it frizz out as it grows out. So with these, I'm not worried about that. I can go right down close to the mid shaft and just really lighten those areas up. Give it a little twist with my fingers and see how it's gonna pop up. Awesome. Move to the sides now, looking for any overhanging length. A Couple of times with my texturizing shears as I lead into that fringe area on the edge of the fringe because I want that broken experience at the fringe. Want it really soft, come in again, slide out. Here again, slide out. So come around this side, slide out. And then when I go to the top, <clears throat> I cut horizontally. So I'm going to texturize vertically. So I'm gonna take these vertical sections like this, lift up slightly over direct forward so I can get some direction that way and just kind of texturize the ends. You could do this by point cutting. A lot of times people do point cutting. For speed though, I kind of like to use my wide texturizers. So now as I start to push and move that hair and separate with my fingers, I can get that direction and I can see which way I want to go. We'll come this way so you can see right through that Mohawk section. Just lift up, angle forward slightly, and slide through. Don't want to over, um, overdo it in, in the section, so I just want to keep it light and free flowing. I don't want to alter my shape. So that's my wet cut. Of course, when it's dry, I'll probably get a different feeling altogether. So what I'm gonna do is jump into my blow drying and start to see what this haircut is gonna turn into as the texture forms. <clears throat> David? All right, so as you can see, I went around and I went from vertical section, and we started from the center profile section, worked that way that way, created section A, then with section B, section C into section B, section D into section B. So what you're doing is you're basically over-directing the section that's next to the previously cut section and pulling it to the side. And what that does is it ensures that you have squareness in the area that's going to fall this way. So if you make it round, it's going to take away the natural shape of it. So by you doing it like that, it's going to give you the squareness 
that you need. Now I am going to come in and I'm going to point cut it once it's dry because I like to be able to point cut when it's dry to be able to create texture. So Corey is going to be blow drying. I'm going to walk you through what Corey is doing and then Corey is going to walk you through what I am doing when I blow dry. So his, 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 his camera is muted and Corey is using a, a 407 brush. He's utilizing a leafing beveling technique when he is doing it and he's rocking and rolling it to be able to give himself the opportunity to be able to get the heat to the roof and to be able to dry. Now, the great thing about the 407 brushes is that the bristles actually heat up. So it gives you the opportunity for the hair to dry much faster when you are utilizing it. And he's using a leaf and beveling technique to be able to create the shape and bevel of the haircut, but also to be able to do directional blow drying and have the hair lay in the area that he wants it to lay in. You want to make sure that you get the roots dry all the way and then focus on the actual follicle because if the roots are not dry, then the actual hair will fall if you're trying to create volume. You see how he's using that technique? And actually, he put in some Maverick grooming spray in there first to be able to help him blow dry because you do not want to blow dry on dry hair because it'll damage the cuticle. And now he's going, uh, going leafing and beveling forward to be able to get it to lay down the way that he wants it to lay. Hey, Sam. You see. Court? Yes. So walk them through what you just did also. I just, um, like, it, like I, it was already prepped with some grooming spray. I added a little bit more grooming spray. Uh, that way I can get some direction of what I wanted to do and pull out the texture. I used some leafing mo uh, movements with my 407 brush using my uh, Neuro Halo blow dryer. Uh, I kind of went towards the center uh, to create some height towards the center and move that texture towards the middle while at the same time, uh, going back to the sides uh, towards the parietal just to check my overall shape and then blow and drying back just to really lift up the hair and almost kind of prepare me for some dry cutting. Uh, then I used the 407 to lay the fringe area down to really start to uh, create that uh, kind of like crop top or uh, you know strong fringe area uh, just to get it laid down the way I want for the style. Um, then I'm going to go in and do a little bit more fine tuning and just really uh, getting that texture going. And then I'm going to put some dry paste in to finish off the overall look. Where are you at, Damon? All right, so I'm actually about to start blow drying myself. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to tell them a, a, a little bit and then you can go ahead and you can walk them through it as I do it as well. Um, Corey used the Halo. I'm actually going to be using the Neural Grip blow dry. I love this particular blow dry because it's only one pound in weight. It is handleless. It is flat based. It has 1875 watts of PC power, three airflow settings, hot and cold. And I'm going to be using my 413 scope and entangling brush. The reason I'm choosing to use this particular brush is because it's ideal for leafing and beveling as well as sculpting. It has 50 antimicrobial bristles on it that prevent the spread of germs from one client to the next. And with everything going on with COVID and everything else, you want to make sure that we're practicing safe practices at all times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of leaf it this way and follow the natural shape. When I get to the crown, I'm going to follow the natural shape of the crown and blow dry the way that it's laying naturally to make sure that it's going to lay perfectly with or without product. And then when I get to the front, I'm gonna take my blow dry and I'm gonna rock it in like this and then I'm gonna roll it and blow dry the roots to create my volume. And then I'm just going to go like that. Once I get it semi where I wanted that, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to kind of utilize my fingers a little bit, rough the cuticle up to be able to create more of a texture effect to it when I dry it like that. Of course. Damon has started his blow dry and I have started to uh, use my dry paste just to separate and define. As you see Damon starting at the crown, <clears throat> starting at the crown is going to give him control over that crown space. Like you said, his whole focus 
at that back area was to stay in control of the swirl that his client has. So it just makes sense for his blow drying technique to start there with manipulation of the crown. It's kind of difficult sometimes for your clients to understand that and they'll style the hair going back. So starting at that area just gives them a good visual of what you really, what we really do as professionals. So then he starts the leafing method with his 413 going straight forward towards the fringe area, lifting the hair, creating texture, pulling it out, pulling out that style and that wonderful scissor cut that he did on the top of the head and then shifting and moving around the fringe, kind of like moving the, the 413 to create a natural movement of the fringe, breaking up that wave and just seeing how it's gonna uh, uh, fall naturally before he starts to manipulate it into the shape that he wants. So I know he wants to do a faux hawk kind of feel to the top. So he's working towards the center and the front and also uh, accentuating the hairline. At this point, he's just checking his haircut, seeing how things are falling, going back around to the crown and moving around to the left side. <clears throat> Continuing with the leafing and the flat wrapping. So the flat wrapping uh, will control the root and then the leafing will control the ends and bring out the texture. So we had about five minutes left to the uh, to the um, to the style as we see Damon's wonderful uh, texture bring out in that fringe area, and as you can see in my doll head versus his um, uh, client, this is what the difference is of the style. So I, you know, was visualizing this effect from the beginning, some texture to pull the texture out. We could just give him a little bit. I would call it the anime anime boy kind of feel, but you just take your fingers with the dry paste and twist all the little textured uh, pieces that I put in with my texture shears. <clears throat> and just pull that out with the dry paste right into the fringe area. Give a little twist at the fringe for that separation as well. Um, and the variations of this haircut, of course, I, I know you guys have seen it. Um, whether uh, it's with a fade, whether it's shorter, whether it's longer, blondes, redheads, it's just, it's kind of a very versatile kind of um, effect. What we mainly wanted to do is be able to show you guys how to achieve, uh, do the same haircut to get multiple looks. Um, my guy's a little bit longer on the sides. I definitely could have went in shorter, but I think I like the way this all blended in, in the shape. <clears throat> so the shape of the silhouette, oh, let me get my little pick. Using the pick to separate as well. And there's my guy. Let me just stand in front of him so I can really see. There we go. So this is more like a modern take on a classic crop that's been really popular over the uh, past, you know, few years. Um, it's a little longer, of course, but uh, you know, before they used to call this like a Caesar cut, um, or even like it's even kind of got a little bit of faux hawk feel, mohawk feel. There we go. All right. So Corey, let me get, jump in here real quick. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. So as you can see, I'm going around with my blending shell with comb. I'm softening up that corner that we created with the block graduation. And you can see a lot more of the corner when you once you blow dry it. Now we have a softness to it. It's still weighted, but it doesn't have that square, square, hard line that we had initially at first, right? So then I'm gonna come in at the top and I'm going to be able to create a little bit more texture. So there's a couple different things we're gonna do and I'm gonna style it afterwards just like Corey did. So starting at the crown, I'm just gonna pull some sections up, right? So if you go in deep like this, you're going to be diffusing the line. 
but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be creating texture. You're just going to be sending out the shaft in the area of the hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in diagonally. I cut it vertically, but I'm going to come in horizontally and I'm going to take my shear and diagonally I'm going to come in and create more of a chunky sections like this. And that's going to create more texture for the haircut. So the less cuts that you have, the more texture it'll be. So if you do like a whole bunch of small little cuts, then it won't have that really textured effect to it. You just want to walk it across and do the same thing going that way. You never want to put your blending shears that are real, the real fine teeth blending shears on the top of the head because you actually damage the cuticle of the hair. So if you want to do that, you want to get some more like texturizing shears uh, like Corey had to be able to create texture tops, but you do not want to use blending shears. So you can use point cutting. You want to come in, and like I said, diagonally, I'm knocking out chunks. As you can see, I'm knocking out these chunks right here. That looks great, Damon. And pulling that out, and you're just working your way all through periodically throughout the haircut. That looks great. So as Damon's finishing that up, I kind of want to, you know, thank you guys for, you know, tuning in with us today. Um, if you guys have any questions about what we've done, feel free to, you know, um, you know, shoot us a message. I'm on Instagram at The Cut Coach, or some of you guys might have me on Facebook as well. Um, or uh, hit up Damon at New York the Barber six one is it six one seven or seven one eight seven one eight Brooklyn seven one eight seven one eight that's what's wrong with him he's from Brooklyn that's a whole nother that's a whole nother class just on Brooklyn haircutting. <laughs>